Welcome to the deep dive. Today, uh, we're doing something a bit different. We're kind of reverse engineering a strategy. That's right. We've got this set of source material, basically architecture questions from the SAP Business AI certification. And we're using those questions uh, really as a roadmap to understand the core philosophy, the you know the foundational architecture behind SAP's whole enterprise AI approach. Exactly, so for you, the listener, this means we're trying to cut past maybe some of the high-level marketing stuff and get right to the, well, the structural answer. Yeah, how it's actually built. Our mission really is to figure out how SAP is positioning its AI to be truly mission critical. Not just, you know, a nice to have on the side, but something living right inside core business processes. Okay, so let's dive right in then, starting at the beginning. SAP Business AI, what actually defines it? What are those sort of fundamental traits that let it be so deeply integrated and importantly trusted for processes where, you know, failure just isn't an option? Well, it really boils down to three interconnected characteristics. These ensure it delivers um, high relevance. If you look at the core requirements, the first one is context awareness. Context awareness. Okay, that sounds a little bit like jargon. How is that different from, say, a standard BI tool that just looks at historical data? Uh, it goes quite a bit deeper than just looking back. Context awareness means the AI understands the operational environment, like right now. Okay. It knows who you are as a user, your specific role, the exact process step you're in, and, this is crucial, the inherent data relationships within that business process. So it's not just crunching numbers from the past, it's applying live operational intelligence. Interesting. So the AI isn't just giving a generic suggestion. It's tailored based on my permissions, my current task. That sounds like it leads straight into the second characteristic you mentioned, embeddedness. Precisely. Embeddedness is really the architectural commitment from SAP. It means the AI capabilities built directly into the SAP applications and workflows themselves. So no need to export data or jump to another tool. None. No separate LLM, no bolt-on analytics you have to switch to. The insight or the prediction or maybe an automated suggestion, it just appears naturally right there where you're already working. Which I imagine saves a huge amount of manual effort and cuts down on potential errors too. Definitely. And that brings us to the final piece, relevance. Relevance. Okay, so this must be about the quality of the AI models themselves. It is, yeah. Relevance ensures the models are highly tuned. They're trained specifically on industry and business scenarios. And this is absolutely vital because, frankly, Generic foundational models often struggle with the nuances of enterprise transactions. Right. They don't understand the specific business context. Exactly. By focusing the models this way, the outputs become immediately meaningful for, you know, precise decision making. Mm. They don't require a lot of heavy human interpretation to figure out what they actually mean for the business. Okay. That's a powerful combination. Context embeddedness and relevance. It seems like this deep integration gives SAP a pretty unique position, competitively speaking. But when you look at the wider market, especially with the big hyperscalers pushing their own AI, what's SAP's core unique selling proposition here? There are really two major strategic differentiators we should probably highlight. Yeah. The first one is all about the input data. This AI is pre-trained and continually refined using mission-critical business data. Ah, right, the data moat idea. SAP has access to decades of proprietary, high-quality, sort of normalized business data from companies running the global economy. Precisely. No external general-purpose model really has access to that depth of verified transactional knowledge, what we sometimes call the ground truth of business operations. Mm. And that proprietary data fuels models that are just inherently more accurate and reliable for specific enterprise tasks right out of the box. Okay, that makes a lot of sense for the quality aspect. But the second differentiator you mentioned, that sounds more architectural, the clean core approach. Absolutely. Clean core is, well, it's pretty much non-negotiable for long-term enterprise health. It means you never modify the core S4 anecode itself. Right. All the custom AI extensions, any custom logic, new applications, they all run externally, typically leveraging the SAP business technology platform, uh, BPP. So the real benefit isn't just that my custom AI works now, but that if I upgrade my core S4 ANA system in, say, five years, yeah. my custom AI logic doesn't suddenly 
break or make the upgrade incredibly complex, it stays decoupled. That is the absolute essence of it. It drastically reduces technical debt, ensures system stability over the long run, which is, you know, paramount when you're dealing with sensitive financials or supply chain operations. You can't afford instability there. That's a perfect transition, actually, to the SAP business technology platform, BTP. If clean core is the philosophy, then BTP is really the operational foundation, isn't it? It is. So for a company looking to build and deploy its own custom AI solution, why is BTP so essential? What's the value add there? Well, BTP really tackles three central architectural challenges you face with custom AI development in an enterprise setting. First, it serves as the central AI foundation. Meaning? Meaning you need one unified place to manage all your diverse data sources, to train your models, deploy them consistently, and then monitor their performance across your entire landscape. BTP provides that single pane of glass, that single source of truth. Okay, unifying the management in second, it must simplify connecting that custom model back into the core systems. Yes, exactly. That's the second big value yeah. proposition. Simplified integration of AI services. Instead of your developers having to build complex, often brittle custom APIs for every single application. Success factors, S4 ANA, Ariba, whatever. Which sounds like a nightmare to maintain. It is. Yeah. BTP provides built-in connectors and standardized services. It makes embedding that AI much more of a configuration task rather than a constant painful development struggle. Okay, and the third value, I'm guessing this is crucial when you're dealing with sensitive data or regulated industries, governance and compliance. Governance is where BTP really shines, particularly for large organizations. It enforces security protocols consistently. It provides clear auditing trails. It manages policy controls across all your AI solutions running on it. Right. So if you're a multinational, dealing with GDPR, CCPA, maybe specific financial or healthcare regulations. Having that unified platform automatically handle compliance aspects is a huge advantage. It's a massive risk reduction measure. And this really underlines the benefit of keeping that innovation on BTP rather than trying to code custom AI logic directly into the core S4HANA system. What are the key gains from keeping things decoupled like that? It comes down to agility and stability, really. BTP just gives you far greater flexibility for deploying custom machine learning models. Your data science teams can iterate much faster. They can test and update models, you know, maybe daily or weekly if needed. While the core ERP system, the one handling payroll and closing the books, that might only get a major update or patch maybe once a year, if that. Precisely. That separation, that decoupling, allows your AI innovations to evolve rapidly. They aren't constrained by the necessarily slower, more cautious upgrade cycle of the core ERP. And that agility is how businesses actually stay competitive these days. Now, let's flip that coin for a second. Huh? What about the complexity if you don't use BTP? Let's say a company decides, OK, we'll just build our complex AI stuff on an external hyperscaler platform. What sort of management headaches do they immediately take on? Oh, that decision definitely carries significant baggage. Instantly, they become responsible for managing data replication and synchronization between that hyperscaler platform and their SAP systems. Which is notoriously tricky. It's complex, it's constant, and it's very error prone. That's the first thing. Then they also have to develop all the security measures specific to that AI application from scratch, essentially trying to replicate the security context that SAP already manages natively. Okay. But maybe the biggest challenge, honestly, is establishing a custom method for integrating the essential business context from the SAP data. Ah, so they lose that inherent context awareness we talked about right at the start. They basically have to rebuild all that operational logic themselves. Exactly that. They have to manually tell the external AI who the user is, what business process is running, and why this specific piece of data matters right now. BTP provides that context natively, out of the box. That saves enormous amounts of development overhead and, crucially, ensures the AI actually remains relevant to the task at hand. Yeah, that makes the platform argument very, very compelling. OK, let's shift gears from the foundational platform up to the user interface layer. Joule, SAP's intelligent co-pilot. How does Joule translate all this underlying architectural complexity into, you know, simple, tangible efficiency gains for the everyday user? Joule is designed to be that gateway. It uses something called an agent's architecture. The idea is it performs high-level tasks for the user through three sort of integrated functions, aiming to vastly improve efficiency. Okay, so the first function must be the language part, understanding user intent across different applications. That's the core natural language processing, yes. You don't need to know transaction codes or specific system paths anymore. You can ask a fairly complex question in plain English. Mm. And Joule is designed to interpret that intent 
across different SAP systems seamlessly. Whether you're interacting with S for Shenna or maybe a procurement application or success factors. Okay, understands what I mean. And the second function sounds like maybe the biggest productivity booster. Yeah. Maintaining business context across various tasks. This one is really critical for flow. If, say, a procurement manager starts by asking Jewel to find suppliers for a specific part number in one system. Right. And then immediately asks for, maybe, a historical risk analysis of those same suppliers, mm -hmm. which might be stored in a completely different financial system. Jewel remember. Jewel automatically carries that vendor ID and part number context across. It remembers the relevant process data from the previous step that eliminates so much repetitive data entry or searching. It's like having a colleague who actually pays attention and remembers what you just told them five minutes ago. Chuckles slightly, something <laughs> like that, yes. And the third function is where it gets really powerful, executing complex workflows. So not just answering questions, but doing things. Exactly. This is automation in action. Joule doesn't just give you an answer or find information. It can actually trigger multi-step actions on your behalf based on just a single request from you. Wow. It might simultaneously update records in multiple systems, maybe generate a complex analytical report, or initiate something like a purchase requisition that actually spans several different backend systems. It automates entire sequences that used to take minutes of clicking and navigating manually. That ability to automate those high value processes, that must be where the serious financial value starts to stack up. Where are we seeing the strongest potential for this kind of automation right now? Which specific business areas are really being transformed by this integrated AI? Yeah, the source material highlight three typical domains where SAP business AI is demonstrating, you know, massive automation potential already. Hey, right, let's start on the buying side, sourcing and procurement. What's happening there? The big gains there seem to be coming from things like smart contract analysis, having the AI rapidly parse complex legal documents, and also accelerated supplier risk assessment. How so? The AI can quickly read through contracts, flag potential discrepancies or non-standard clauses, and it can assess supplier reliability almost in real time by pulling data from various sources. This means purchasing decisions get made faster and hopefully with significantly lower risk exposure. Makes sense. Okay, next, the operational side, manufacturing and supply chain. Here, the focus is really on predictive capabilities, things like predictive maintenance for critical machinery, anticipating failures before they happen, and also vastly superior demand forecasting, using more variables than humans typically can track. And the outcome. The net result is less unplanned downtime on the factory floor and much better inventory optimization across the supply chain. Both of those directly impact the bottom line, reducing costs and improving service levels. Okay. And the third area may be the one that causes the most headaches for anyone who's worked in finance. Financial close. Slight chuckle. Ah, yes. The joys of period and closing. AI is set to really transform this, primarily through automatic classification of financial transactions and immediate anomaly detection. How does that speed things up? It basically automates a huge chunk of the manual reconciliation, and checking that takes so much time. It can spot unusual patterns or potential errors far faster than humans can. This can potentially speed up the closing process from days down to hours in some cases. Freeing up accountants to do more valuable analysis. Exactly. Less time on data cleanup and ticking and tying, more time on strategic financial analysis. Okay, this brings us to a really crucial piece, the framework governing all this power, ethics and responsibility. When you embed AI, this deeply inside mission-critical financial and operational systems, trustworthiness isn't just nice to have, it's absolutely paramount. What are the key guiding ethical principles SAP is following here? Yeah, these principles really define how the technology interacts with both the human operators and the data itself. First and foremost is user control. User control, meaning? It mandates that human decision makers must remain in charge. The AI can provide recommendations, it can offer options, it can automate parts of a process, but it cannot take autonomous, irreversible actions in core business systems without some form of human approval or oversight. Got it. So the human is always in the loop, effectively. The final sign-off remains human. What about ensuring the AI's outputs are, you know, impartial? That's the second core principle, fairness. Mm -hmm. The models have to be designed and then rigorously tested, specifically to avoid systemic bias. How do you ensure that? It involves careful data selection, ongoing monitoring, and testing to make sure the AI treats all users, all transactions, all data subjects equitably. The goal is to prevent discriminatory or uneven outcomes that might arise from biases hidden in the training data. 
Okay. And given the kind of data involved here, personal employee data, sensitive customer data, critical business financials, the third principle must be around data privacy, right? Absolutely non-negotiable. Protecting personal data, protecting sensitive business data, and strictly adhering to regulations like GDPR, CCPA, and others around the world, that's the foundational requirement. So it's built in from the start. An enterprise AI strategy simply has to be built on the premise that if the AI doesn't meet the highest privacy and security standards, it just doesn't get deployed, period. Okay. Now, let's widen the lens a bit. We've seen how this integrated business AI works internally, but how does it act as an enabler for customers who are maybe undergoing a massive cloud transformation, moving from older systems to S4 and a cloud, for instance? How does AI actually accelerate that shift? It accelerates that kind of modernization in uh, three main strategic ways. First, it significantly enhances the business case for moving to the cloud in the first place. How so? Well, big transformation projects are expensive, right? But embedding AI delivers immediate tangible efficiency gains like faster analytics, automated processes we just discussed. This makes the overall cloud migration project much more financially compelling, right from day one. You see ROI faster. Gives them a quicker payback story for the investment. Makes sense. Correct. Second, it helps ensure intelligent process redesign. It encourages customers not to just take their old, maybe inefficient, heavily customized on-premise processes and simply lift and shift them into the cloud. Right, avoid paving the cow paths. Exactly. AI pushes them, guides them really, to utilize standard automation capabilities and redesign their workflows from day one, optimizing them for the cleaner, more standardized cloud environment. Okay. And finally, the big monster in every large migration project, legacy data. Ah, yes. AI is becoming pretty essential for accelerating the cleanup and preparation of legacy data for migration. It can cleanse, map, and structure decades of historical data far more quickly and often more accurately than any manual team ever could. So you start fresh in the cloud with better data. Precisely. This ensures the new cloud environment starts with high-quality, reliable data, which in turn dramatically accelerates the whole migration timeline and reduces risk. Okay, before we wrap this up, let's just quickly touch on one specific, very high-volume application area, SAP Document AI. For organizations drowning in paperwork invoices, contracts, shipping documents, what's the key value proposition there? Document AI really addresses two critical scale issues for businesses. First, it provides enterprise-grade orchestration for secure and efficient document flow, making sure documents are routed correctly, processed reliably, maybe across different countries with different rules. Mm -hmm. And second, and just as importantly, it achieves high scalability and compliance in document processing. It's built to handle massive inbound volumes while automatically meeting necessary legal and regulatory standards for things like data retention and secure handling. Thanks for diving deep with us today. Thank you. It was a good discussion.